Hi everyone, so today I thought I'll illustrate eyes and I would recommend for you to Google the word eyes and just randomly look at different um, pictures of eyes or go on Pinterest and just find eyes that look interesting, the shape of them, something that doesn't look too, you know, perfect, too made up, um, something that has, yeah, a bit of character in there. So I'm going to try and basically look at those eyes and illustrate them I will use different um, pens because um, it will just be a bit interesting to play around with different inks so I've got a selection in this IKEA container and that's all I'm doing so I'm not trying to be hyper realistic here uh, just sort of studying the shape of eyes and that will really help you to improve your illustration skills. Now I have to say that the eyes that I typically illustrate they're, they're not realistic in any way, they're quite exaggerated um, and that's just how I like it. But doing this exercise will definitely teach you a few things of how to look and study uh, shapes and how you can portray different moods through eyes. So I'm going to do a pupil like that because that's something I like to do. I want to show you how the um, this pen looks when you dissolve it with water so basically all I'm doing is just I have water on my brush now inks are not watercolors so you need to keep that in mind that they stain very quickly and also some inks dissolve more than the others so you can completely lose a line so you need to keep in mind how much detail you want to uh, keep because if you just wet the entire eye you will lose pretty much everything so over here I'm just going to do it on top like that and a little bit on the actual iris and I will leave it at that <coughs> okay so this one was also 
water soluble, I believe, was it? Yes, yeah, so this is water soluble. And I'm just going to do it in some areas and not in all areas. Mm. So the one I just done is the black um, Muji pan. And then these two are the waterproof. So if I'm going to go over it, nothing happens. So hence why I can use watercolors with them. So let's have a look. I think I'm going to go with the Mayan Blue Genuine, like so. And add a bit of paint grain to there and underneath. like that I think I'm going to leave it and and then a little bit into the iris and then we have this with the same one so maybe let's see what color scheme shall we use maybe I'll use the um, that shimmery one, the iridescent scarab. This is quite. It's not an opaque color. It's you can make it opaque if you work on it, but you can also get it quite sheer. So at the moment it's actually quite opaque, but I really loaded it. So I'm just going to. It's uh, a duochrome. And they tend to be quite sheer but the good thing with this one is you do have that variety if you want to so that's what I'm going to do and then a little bit of paints gray just to add a bit of color and that's it and then finally I want to show you this one, which is gorgeous, very beautiful. That's the Feud de Manon fountain pen with the um, with the Waterman ink. Now, if you want to use watercolor with this, it'd be quite tricky because they would start flowing into one another. So. If you do use this one, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but let's try it. So I'm going to go into gold and metallics tend to be a little bit on the sheer side as well, depending what brand you go. So I'm just going to make the gold go into there and it's as, as it's coming in contact with Oh, you see what happens there? As it's coming in contact with the black ink, it's just going to uh, kind of go together and intervene. And then I'm going to also create iris here. A bit of iris color. And there isn't much happening here, so I'm just going to pull it out and then try to move it. But this ink doesn't move. Once it has done the job it kind of stays like that it's um, for example here i wouldn't be able to move it it becomes permanent so <clears throat> let me just dry these eyes quickly and then come back okay so they are dry and i definitely have a, a couple of favorites as it is right now so i actually quite like how the iridescent scarab watercolor looks here there's still a little bit that's wet um, so I'll show you once it's fully dried, but basically these two I think are my favorites and it's no surprise to me It's because I do like how the uh, waterman ink uh, Works with water and also I've never tried this combo before with the gold um, Watercolor and that's beautiful because like I said, it just flew and blended and What I can do is I can go 
and create a little bit more detail in the other eyes if I feel like it. So for example, I can use the same pen or a different pen for a bit of detail and just basically bring in the uh, detail back in if I feel like um, that it was lost and that's something you can do. So then you have the combination of broken up lines, softened lines and a little bit more detail back in. So just something easy and simple what I've just done there. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing you can do is take a um, pencil and I particularly love the polychromos. I think they're just the best colored pencil that there are in existence. So these are the Faber-Castell. I have a number of gray tones. My favorites have to be the Payne's Gray, uh, the Warm Gray 2, and I do like this one as well, which is that Earth Green, kind of like a grayish, grayish um, green. A black, and then I have a Warm Gray 4. <clears throat> so I've got a variety here. I'm just going to go ahead and sharpen them quickly. Okay, so they're now uh, very sharp and eyes is something that I would recommend have a sharp pencil for because there are um, certain illustrations you can get away with a softer end and actually you do need a softer end but um, for something like an eye where I want to bring out detail it is better to have it uh, a little sharpened and let's see so I'm going to go in with this green and I'm just going to add it in certain areas here and there and then I'll do just a little bit darkening up over here if I really want something to be quite dark I tend to go with the black over the top that just will increase it quite dramatically but to begin with if I just want to give a shape to my to to work with I tend to go for paints gray I really like that and then I'm going to take a bit of gray and just add it as a shading just underneath like that and a little here as well and then I will take the black and that straight away just deepens everything again I wouldn't recommend doing it all over I would just do it at the darkest points that you want to achieve and then the lightest grey is just great for blending because white obviously would be too harsh in this case. So I'm just going to use it as a blender. That's the warm grey too again. And that is pretty much it. Although I do want to add a bit of this grey onto here. Like that and just leave a bit of a highlight at the very top of the lid like so I think I actually will use the paints gray just to go a tone darker or a couple of tones actually and then I will close it up at the top like that so what we are creating here is some dimension so we're starting off quite dark right in the corners in fact I will go a little bit higher here and that way change the eye shape slightly and then we're taking this grey to blend it with and then Payne's grey 
to put in between and then that is it and if I want to lighten something without killing the highlight I can just go over the very edge of that paints gray and well, actually not paints gray this is the warm gray four and just work at it like that so that's what I would recommend you could totally do it on these eyes as well um, you could go quite crazy with your color scheme you could uh, work with some pinks um, this one is the medium flesh so that's a very nice pink color definitely not flesh color don't know why they called it flesh it's way too pink for that but it's quite fun for this sort of thing and I always like to use this yellow it's like a mango yellow that's always nice so this is the dark chrome yellow just a little sort of blending in here and there kind of can make things look a lot more interesting it just pops things and I would recommend to repeat this same color elsewhere in the illustration so if you're putting it somewhere in the lid try to put it maybe in the iris as well or maybe somewhere underneath it just kind of catches on let me actually zoom in just realize you might not there you go you can see it very well now it just looks scrumptious um, so that's that and for a blending color I can go for something lighter which is a light flash if I wanted to just lighten things up a little um, for that extra bit of dimension I can do that and that's pretty much it I would leave it at that nice and simple so the eye is still simple it's not overworked but it just lifted it so from something like that you can achieve um, a bit more dimension and a bit more interest so here the eye is quite I left the iris wide I could in fact go in there actually with a nice bright orange so I have a couple of oranges here let's have a look I'll use uh, this trio so that's a dark cadmium orange and orange glaze and let's see I'll start with the darkest right here at the bottom I think the orange fiery orange up against the pink of this brown ink that it dissolves into I think should be a very nice kind of popping color so I'm just going to layer that color and then finish off with a bit of this again not taking it all the way and just blending it going over the other colors using it as a blender and then again going back in with this with a little more pressure I think if you're not a fan of pencils you might get really really surprised if you try polychromos if you haven't yet because I have never been a huge fan of pencils and I said this before because they used to be so dry and chalky and these are fabulous they're so gorgeously soft and you can just work with them even if you're not a professional when it comes to these pencils or in general working with pencils uh, but yeah this this is just fabulous so I've got a couple of things here some browns which I think I want to try and so this is a caput mortem uh, this one is Pompeian red and this one is Sanguine. so let's have a look I just want to bring a little more detail just into here because the watercolor has been yeah there you go much better now I wonder if I should do the same here just a little like that and then kind of using I think the trick is is using a trio of watercolor pencils because you then have a dark tone a medium tone and a light tone and you don't jump from one to another in a harsh way 
but you kind of blend the colors together and that makes it more um, kind of poppy you know just makes makes whatever you're drawing pop a little bit more so there you go now I'm blending it all together with the lightest color and if I want to darken it I go back in to the darkest point and do it like that and I, I think I will leave it at this but I could sort of work on top of it so those are my eyes and it's a great exercise to uh, make yourself do on a day when you're not sure what to paint or just to improve your eye drawing skills and learn how to create different moods basically and you know different shapes and all of that which we already covered off so this is it this is the gold and let's have a look here this one is fully dried so this is the iridescence carob is beautiful because it's a duochrome that goes from this kind of like a brownie color peachy brownie into this beautiful green that you can see so i achieved that eyeshadow color uh, simply by using that one wood color and when you um, kind of blend it out with a bit of water it's a very pretty shadow color as well very soft so that's it i hope you enjoyed it and it was somewhat useful for you and those are my eyes and yeah thanks for watching and see you soon